In this video, we're going to show you how to do the top end on a two-stroke motorcycle. In this case, we have a 2015 YZ125 that's long overdue for a top end. We're going to install a vertex piston and gasket kit onto the bike. Uh, just to give you an idea, 125 piston, pretty tiny. That's about as small as they come. Actually, they come smaller. But uh, needless to say, we'll show you how everything's done. Okay, first thing we're going to do is drain the coolant out of the engine. Um, so what you're going to need to do, loosen the radiator cap so that uh, the coolant will flow easily and you're going to undo the drain bolt on the water pump cover down here. It's ready to catch. Once the coolant's drained, you put your drain bolt back in and you're going to start uh, taking the body work off the bike. Next we're going to pull our motor mounts and our radiator hose. In order to get the cylinder out of the way easier, you're going to need to remove the radiators uh, and push them forward. As a preview of what you're about to see in the engine, now is a good time to remove the spark plug just to see how your engine was running. Okay, as you can see, this bike's been running a little bit rich. There's a lot of carbon residue here, so we'll probably find a lot of that in the engine. Okay, now we're going to remove the power valve cover. Next, we're going to remove this linkage arm off the cylinder. Be careful not to drop that washer. Yeah. Also, be careful not to lose this spacer. Okay, now we're ready to take the cylinder off. Okay, now remove the nuts off the cylinder head and do this in a crisscross fashion, gently, so that uh, you're not warping the head as you take it off. Go ahead and remove the cylinder head. Okay, now we're ready to remove our cylinder. It may take a little prodding. This one came up real easy. I'll just bring it up nice and easy. Okay, now we're ready to take our clip off the piston, remove the piston, and take a look at our top end to see how everything is running. First thing we want to do is stuff the crankcase with a rag so we don't lose a clip down the, down the crankcase. Uh, in this particular case, we can use needle nose pliers to remove the sur clip. We have such a large opening here, so we're just going to grab that and pull it right out. We can try with our finger to push it out. Sometimes they take a little bit and you'll have to use a tool. Just be careful not to damage anything. Don't want to punch these out with a hammer. 
anything like that. So once you've removed your piston on a two-stroke, it shows you a lot of evidence about how your bike is running. In this particular case, we can see that the piston ring has worn and we're starting to get some blow-by. On a single ring engine, you do need to change these very frequently. Uh, you can see this one went a little bit past uh, where it needed to. You can see that the, the top, it's burning maybe a little bit rich here, um, but it shows that, you know, the the fuel mixture is transferring real nice. That's where you see all these lighter areas like this. Um, there's very little in the way of scarring here, but there's possibility that you know maybe this engine was warmed up a little too quickly and you know maybe scuffed a little bit here. Maybe the piston um, expanded a little quicker than the uh, cylinder did. Go. And then one thing of note to always look at with a two-stroke piston is look at the underside of the piston. If you can see a lot of discoloration, you can see that it's been, uh, it's got a little bit too hot. This is, you know, it's seen some heat, but it's not as bad as what I've seen. So, uh, but that's something to always look for. Now, when we look at the cylinder, we can still see there's nice cross hatching here um, on the bore, but we do see some lines here. Again, probably the piston, um, you know, the bike wasn't warmed up enough and someone just took off and went wide open with it, but there's nothing crazy about this right here. One thing to point out about the cylinder head, it's usually a really good idea to resurface these, make sure they're completely flat because this thin metal does warp a little bit. Um, so you would put this on a flat stone with some 400 to 600 grit sandpaper on there and just work it in a nice crisscross fashion to make sure that it's completely flat. As an indicator of ring wear, we can check the ring end gap. This is the old ring and we can see that our largest feeler gauge passes through the gap right there. Now when the new ring is installed, you can see the ring end gap is closed up quite a bit and that when we put the feeler gauge in here, we can get the correct spec. Just as a note, pistons do come in different sizes and you will want to get the correct piston for your cylinder. A lot of times they can be designated uh, on the cylinder. You'll have a letter marked A, B, C, D. Same thing with uh, the piston itself. If your cylinder has a lot of wear, you can take it to a machine shop and have them measure it with a dial bore gauge to see exactly the size of your cylinder so you get the perfect match. Piston circlips can be tricky to install, so we're gonna put one clip in before we put it on the bike. So what we wanna do, we'll put the clip in, press as much of it in by hand as we can, take a pick, pop it in. Now from here, we wanna make sure that it goes into the slot. So pop it in, make sure that uh, the clip is in place so you can actually move it with your pick or screwdriver. The piston ring usually has a top and bottom. In this case, it's designated with a letter right here. Uh, in most cases, there is a pin on the back of the piston where this gap will go. So you'll want to insert one side of the ring and gently work it on the rest of the way. And you can see it fits in there nice. The base gasket surface can be cleaned up with some contact cleaner and a rag, or if you've got some stubborn gasket material, you can use a brand new razor blade and that'll help get uh, anything up. Now that we've cleaned the surface here, we're going to put a new base gasket on. Make sure that it fits over the dowels and fits nicely on here. Now we're ready to install our piston. First thing, we're going to put the bearing in and we're just going to lubricate this with just a dab of two-stroke oil. Same thing on the rod here. Put that in. 
Now you're going to do the same thing with your piston. Go ahead and put just a dab of oil on either end uh, where the wrist pin sits. And on the wrist pin too. Okay, now we're going to insert our wrist pin into the piston. And we're going to insert that onto the crank. Everything should go in smoothly. Also, just to touch on briefly, two strokes pistons do have a front and a back. So oftentimes they're designated with an arrow on top of the piston. You can also see cutouts for the intake ports on the back side of the piston. So just realize that. And in most cases, the piston pin will be on the back side of the piston. Finally, you're gonna put the last circ clip in. Push as much as you can in with your finger and snap it in with a pick or small screwdriver. And I'm just checking to make sure that it's seated nice. Okay, ready for the next step. Okay, finally we're gonna put our cylinder on top of our piston here. So we're gonna just make sure that our ring is in place. Squeeze the ring, and we'll squeeze that right on top of the cylinder. Once you've got it into place, it's a good idea just go ahead and move it up and down a few times just to make sure everything's free. Now we'll bolt everything down, torque it down. Okay, so now we're gonna put our nuts back on our cylinder. And we'll just tighten it down, just a small bit of torque here. At this point, there's a couple notes to be aware of. Now, I've just lightly tightened up the nuts on the cylinder, and what we wanna do is just put the piston up to top dead center. On some two-stroke motorcycles, uh, there is a spec for the top of the piston in relation to the top of the cylinder. In this particular case, everything is fine. It's below the, um, the deck head here, so you're good with that. In other bikes where it's a little more critical, you might have to build up or subtract base gasket, so it can be a little trial and error. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna to torque these cylinder nuts down. Now, it's real easy to reach these with a torque wrench uh, with just a socket, but there's a couple of them, obviously this one that's hidden, that you can't do it. Uh, that's why some companies like Motion Pro make this torque wrench adapter and essentially what it does, it just allows you to get in here and get that hard to reach spot. When you do use this, what happens is you just bolt this to your torque wrench. Now you have a torque wrench instead of it being say 12 inches long, now it's say 15 inches long and there's a mathematical formula you'll use to get the proper torque. Um, but once again, these two strokes are really important to get the proper torque it's very low, you need to be real even, so you want to tighten everything up very carefully and um, go from there. So in this case, I just put this on. I'm going to tighten everything up, crisscross fashion. And then eventually, we'll get to the point where We actually hear the torque wrench work. A lot of two strokes use O-rings as their head gaskets and 
they do need to be replaced frequently. Um, a lot of times too, that these gaskets need to be lubricated in some way, um, either you know like a lithium grease or sometimes you know just a real thin coating of oil works well. But just put these in, make sure they get seated well, and then clean off any excess lubricant you might have on here. We can install the head now. And each one of these studs gets a copper washer. If you've done a lot of top ends, you need to replace the washers. They're crush washers and uh, they do distort. Now once we've got the nuts back on the cylinder head, we're just going to tighten these down gradually in a crisscross fashion. And then we'll do our final tightening with the torque wrench. For the power valve linkage, we'll put this collar back on. And we're going to want to just pull this up a little bit so it fits onto this and we'll tighten everything down. Finally, when you're tightening down the power valve link, linkage, you'll just want to put something in here so you're not damaging anything internally so that this doesn't move while you tighten it.